You're traveling through another dimension. A dimension not only of sight and sound, but of mind. A journey into a wondrous land whose boundaries are those of imagination. Your next stop, the Twilight Zone. Lady Lynbrook Cosmetics. How may I make your world more beautiful? One moment. Lady Lynbrook. Oh, good morning, Tim. Yes, she's expecting your call. If you'll hold, please. Mrs. Lynbrook. Yes? Mr. Gunn on line two. What's that? Shall I put him through? Speak up. I can't hear you. The Bravo account. Shall I put... <laughs> I don't know any Mr. Bravo. It's Mr. Gunn. If you like, oh, I'll... Sally, please. I'm due at the photo shoot. Mr. Munn will have to call back, if that's really his name. Gunn. What? Nothing, Mrs. Lindbrook. Stop muttering, dear. Should I tell Burton to have the car ready? And have Burton bring the car around. <laughs> yes, ma'am. <sighs> He's already parked downstairs. Wayne. Good morning, Miss Richards. <laughs> I mean, Mr. Benson. She's getting to you? Well, sometimes we do have a little... Failure to communicate. <laughs> Tell me about it. Last week I locked myself out of the house, had to climb in the window and she couldn't hear the doorbell. Vanity, all is vanity. Whoever said that got it right. Anyway, the limo's at the curb. Burton's waiting for her call, like a good dog. She won't use the cell phone. Oh, why not? She's convinced there's something wrong with it. Don't worry, Sally. I won't let her take the company down with her. I'll tell her you're here. Oh, that's all right. Let me uh, surprise her. Mirror, mirror on the wall. Who? Gotcha. Wayne, darling, I didn't hear you come in. If I were a snake, I would have bitten you. Well, you shouldn't sneak up on me like that. I haven't finished my makeup. Be a dear and hand me the hairspray. You know they have makeup people at the shoot. What? I said you're beautiful as always. Well, I have to be, in case my handsome husband drops by. Oh, I'm afraid I'll divorce you if your lipstick's on crooked. Something wrong with my lipstick? Uh, we need to talk. Did you say something? My point exactly. Rose, I've been thinking. I have an idea. What would you say to a romantic weekend? Just the two of us. It's about the business. Uh, of course, our first anniversary isn't till Valentine's Day. But we could get a head start. <laughs> Actually, that's not a bad idea. The cabin in the mountains... Uh... I could join you later. And... Later? I, I don't understand. Not very long. A, a few days and... And <laughs> what would I do in the meantime? A chance to rest. Clear your head. You work so hard. Uh, who would run things here? Well, I could take the reins. Temporarily, of course. But I enjoy my work. Now, now, don't be stubborn. It's for your own good. Uh, you think I can't handle it anymore? Just because this building has such dreadful acoustics. It's not the building. Admit it, if you weren't so... Vain. Ah, that's not what I said. I've told you, I will not wear hearing aids. It has nothing to do with vanity. They hurt my ears. They distort everything. I wouldn't understand a word anyone says. All the more reason to take some time off. You'll see. You'll be able to run the business more efficiently. More profitably. I've done quite well until now, thank you. I think you hear what you want to hear. Whenever the word business comes up... My business, Wayne. The one I built from the ground up long before you came along. You are the most stubborn woman I've ever met. I, I only want what's best for you. You know that, don't you, darling? A company based on beauty. Not on what a person can or can't hear. Beauty is, they say, as beauty does. 
And the CEO of Lady Lynbrook Cosmetics understands this, or thinks she does. But truth, well, that's something else. Like perfection, it may lie in the eye or the ear of the beholder. Rose Lynbrook is about to hear one very surprising truth, intended especially for her and broadcast directly from the Twilight Zone. And now, The Twilight Zone and our story, Now You Hear It, Now You Don't, starring Dee Wallace with Stacy Keach as your narrator. Here we are, ma'am. Burton, why are you stopping? I say we're at the studio, Mrs. Lindbrook. What time is it? We're right on schedule. Not late, are we? Not in the slightest. Oh, speak up, will you? I I'll get the door. Would you kindly help me with the door? Certainly. Where is my blusher? Ready, ma'am? Well, I guess this will have to do. Watch your step. The, the curb. Not that door, Burton. The other one. I can't slide over leather in this dress. I suggest the sidewalk side. Traffic this time of day is... How's the traffic? I say it's not safe. <sighs> Quickly, they're waiting. I'll go around. <sighs> Man would be late for his own funeral. Well, don't just stand there. Give me your hand. One moment, there's a bus. Now! But, ma'am... Oh, never mind. I don't need your help. Wait! Ah! Get behind me! Oh! Burton! Burton! Oh. Uh, ma'am, are you... Are you... Uh... Burton! Oh, did you see that? She stepped right out into the street. What's the matter? Didn't she hear the horn? Must be dead. Oh, if it wasn't for that chauffeur, it would have hit her head on. The poor man. Hey, hey, somebody, call an ambulance. Stop fussing. I'm rechecking your blood pressure. This dress is ruined. I consider it a small price to pay. I want to go home. Not so fast. Nothing's broken. You said so yourself. X-rays don't always tell the whole story. I'd like to hold you for observation. What? Our best private room, of course, unless you demand the entire floor. <laughs> I can't hear a word you're saying. How convenient. This is Fashion Week. I have a contract with every designer on the runway. I'm sure your assistant... What's can... that? I say, let your assistant handle it. <laughs> Sally? <sighs> Her grandparents were hippies. Rose, how long have we known each other? What are you going on about? More years than either of us cares to remember. And at that time, I've seen you through... Oh, let's say... The vicissitudes of a life well-lived. From the occasional nip and tuck to brow lifts, chemical peels, injections from the endangered species list. I've done everything you asked. You should. I pay you enough. But I've never lied to you. The issue is no longer appearance. It's a matter of communication. If you can't interact effectively with the world around you... Call Burton. What? Tell him I need him. I'll take that as a sign of short-term memory loss, rather than a hardening of the heart. Would you not? I'm exercising due diligence. Let's have another look at those eyes. I've had enough of your pawing and probing. Why don't you tell me what you remember about the accident? This is the room. You can't go in there. Out of my hey. way. Hey! Wayne! Stop! Get me my purse. I need a mirror. 
Rose, I got here as fast as I could. Sir, there's a waiting room. It's all right, nurse. This must be... My present husband. Wayne Benson. How do you do? Rose, thank God. And my assistant, Sally Richards. Mrs. Lindbrook, are you all right? Why is she here? Uh, Sally drove. As soon as we heard... What on earth happened? A chance encounter with a rather large bus. Apparently she didn't hear the horn. Isn't that so, Mrs. Lindbrook? What horn? Any broken bones? Only a few bruises. Her driver took the brunt of it. Where is Burton? Uh, in IC. See that he gets the best of care. We're doing everything we can. Will you please take me home? Darling, are you sure that's a good idea? <sighs> At once. I'll make the medical decisions, if you don't mind. You can't hold me here. Not without a lawsuit. On what grounds? Emotional distress. Confinement against my will. And overbilling for utterly pointless tests. You're being unreasonable, not to mention reckless. Sally, call my lawyer. Yes, Mrs. Lindbrook. <sighs> Very well, if that's the way you want it. You'll have to sign a release of liability. Anything. Just get me out of here. These are muscle relaxants. Take one as needed. The other pills will help you sleep. Nurse, send up a chair. Right away, doctor. Why is everyone treating me like an invalid? I can stand on my own two feet. D careful, darling. The wheelchair's on its way. I wouldn't be caught dead in one of those contraptions. Hospital insurance requires it. But don't worry, someone can roll you to the exit with a bag over your head if you're afraid of being seen. I could park by the ramp in back. Would you mind, Sal? We'll meet you there. No problem. Mrs. Lindbrook, I just want to say how relieved we all are. What did she say? She said you look absolutely fabulous. Oh. What was that about Burton? Don't worry your pretty head. I'm sure he'll get the best care money can buy. And what is that monstrosity? One final indignity. A standard issue neck support. Uh, you can put your scarf over it, or I'll pull the fire alarm and clear the hall. I don't think that'll be necessary. Good. It would be a first in this wing. Uh, Mr. Lenbrook? Benson. Yes, the release form is at the front desk. Be sure she initials the waiver. Oh, Wayne, do be a dear. Oh, uh, right. Scamper, darling. And this little box is for you, too. What is it? A special gift. I don't like surprises. Go ahead. Open it. <gasps> no. Absolutely not. Give it a chance. That's all I ask. I've made myself perfectly clear. This is a prototype. A real advance, I'm told. They call it the H-100. I will not wear a hearing aid. An entirely new technology. The research lab needs someone to field test it. Who knows? You might be written up in the scientific journals. I don't want that kind of publicity. Think of what it might mean for others. Let them get their own hearing aids. I tell you, you're the perfect subject. Oh, then I shouldn't need it. Rose, be honest with yourself this once. Anyone else would have heard that bus. It came out of nowhere. With a hundred decibel horn blasting away? Face it, you have degenerative hearing loss. And it's only going to get worse. Look, it's no larger than a pencil eraser. An experimental microcircuit with full frequency range. And this is the wireless control unit, the size of a lipstick. At least try it. I couldn't possibly. Then I can't possibly release you. If I add borderline concussion to your chart, the decision will be out of my hands. You wouldn't. What's more important? Your vanity or your life? It doesn't even look real. Completely invisible once it's in place. It won't fit. Hold still while I insert it in the ear canal. There. Where's my purse? Here's a mirror. See for yourself. Even that new husband of yours won't know. 
From now on, you'll hear every word, every whisper. The two of you will be closer than a kiss. Is that true? Your secret. Trust me, this will make a new woman out of you. Go ahead, turn it on before he comes back. It's just this little switch here. See how you're doing. Rose, I'd stop by. You didn't need to do that. How is she? About the same. Up and around yet? Uh, she doesn't do well out of bed. No? Still pretty shook up. The pills don't help? Not much. Do you, uh, do you have anything stronger? I don't know if that's wise. Drink? Oh, you go ahead. I've, uh... I tried to keep the pressure off, but without the business to worry about, well, she, she's lost. Uh, really? I guess it's all she knows. She just can't cut it anymore. She, she doesn't even want to try. That doesn't sound like the rose I know. The accident really did a number on her. She needs more downtime. It's possible, I suppose. Or maybe she's had too much. I'm thinking of moving her to a place in the country until she gets her strength back. Oh, I don't know about that. There's nothing wrong with her body. Of course, if it's emotional, I could refer her to a specialist. A shrink? She wouldn't hear of it. Well, then let's try this. A couple of days a week back in her old office, for starters. She's not ready. She can sign letters, make some calls, the way she used to. See how it goes. Not a good idea, Doc. Well, it might do her a world of good. I couldn't allow it. Allow? <laughs> well, she hasn't been declared incompetent yet. No, but... That's... Let me have a look at her. This isn't a good time. Well, she's awake, isn't she? I'll check. Don't trouble yourself. I think I remember the way. First door at the top of the stairs, isn't it?
Rose? Come in, doctor. How did you know? I heard you. All the way downstairs? Before that. When you turned the corner and drove up. Really? <laughs> that hearing aid must be more sensitive than I thought. Oh, it is. Imagination was always one of your strong points. You're looking well. I look a fright. Not at all. Mind if I give you the once-over? I'm glad you're here. Why, I'm positively flattered. Pulse normal. Eyes a little bloodshot. A lovely green as ever. Hazel, I thought you'd never come. Something on your mind? You can always call. He took my phone away. Wayne? He said it was broken. Then I'm sure he'll get you a new one. <laughs> Don't bet on it. Now, now. Let's check that blood pressure. He wants to put me in a sanitarium. Have you been taking the pills? I only pretend to swallow in case he switches them. So you haven't been sleeping. That can make the world seem a very different place. Lie still for a moment. There. A little low, but close enough. I'm a prisoner in my own home. I don't see any padlocks on the doors. The longer I stay here, the weaker I get. I'm afraid to eat. He might put something in the food. Oh, come now. He was right. You all were. I wasn't competent, but isn't it ironic? Because of what happened, I received the greatest gift of all. The ability to hear the truth. Don't be dramatic. You had a problem, and I treated it. The hearing aid works well, then? Too well. I keep it turned all the way down. Otherwise, I couldn't bear it. Amazing what they can do with those little circuits. I was able to hear everything again, and more. Oh, so much more. Other people, other rooms. The gardener below, the mailman on his rounds, the birds flying overhead. Surely not. The cleaning lady downstairs, the cook in the kitchen. Wayne, when he arrives home, before he puts the key in the door, muttering to himself, talking on his phone. He doesn't know I hear, but I do. All of it. A trick of acoustics. Uh, air vents in the walls. Oh, I know my own house. All right, Rose. I'll play along. So you think you hear voices? Let me guess. Talking about you, are they? I am not paranoid. An overworked imagination is more like it. That and too much time on your hands. Lying here with nothing to do, your mind heating up like a compost heap. Get out. Ah, I've offended you. Do as I say. There's the Rose I know, the one who suffers no opposition, who stands up for herself at the drop of I'll a... I'll prove it to you. Go into the hall. Now. That's the spirit. Close the door and begin speaking. What would you like me to say? Anything. Whisper it as softly as you can. Very well. Now, where's the control? Testing, one, two, three. Mm -hmm. That late already? Traffic will be a nightmare. That should do. You can come back now. Well? What card did I pick? You took exactly seven steps to the end of the hall. Very good. A security camera? Oh, of course, the floorboards do creak. The alarm on your wristwatch. It beeped three times before you turned it off. Now that is a neat trick. Where's the hidden microphone? And feel free to bill me, Doctor, for the inconvenience of rush hour traffic. How did you know that? You spoke it under your breath. Did I? Yes, I must have. Either that or... I'd have to conclude your little hearing aid picks up people's thoughts. 
And I'm afraid I don't believe in magic. Believe what you like. Occam's razor is good enough for me. A scientific principle I learned in medical school. It says, begin with the simplest explanation. Anything else is merely spinning our wheels. I know what I hear. Do you? I'm nobody's fool. No, you're not. You're a stubborn, hard-headed businesswoman. One who learned how to think for herself. <laughs> I had a good teacher. That you did. Your first husband, Jake, rest his soul. I remember when he founded the company. And you, listen to me, you had the courage to take it to the next level. By thinking pragmatically, not by worrying over imaginary enemies. Yes, I did that, didn't I? On my own, using the tools he gave me. So, if I have to deal with this on my own... But you're not alone. Do you know how lucky you are? There's a man downstairs who only wants what's best for you. He'd do anything to make you happy. But I heard him talking to that girl, hatching some sort of plan. Snap out of it. No one's trying to hurt you. Can't you see what's happened? You suffered a shock and a delayed reaction, what they call post-traumatic stress. And now your thoughts are trapped in a tape loop, playing the fear over and over again. That's not something you're used to, is it? Learning to rely on others. Learning to trust yourself again. No. Wake up, Rose. You are not a victim. Never have been and never will be. It's time to start thinking again about what's best for you, for the business. You make it sound so easy. What do people do when they fall off a horse, hmm? You know the answer as well as I do. Get right back in the game. But first things first, start with some real rest. Sleep that knits up the raveled sleeve of care. But I do hear things. So you told me. You know what that is? Your own insecurities talking. Not hard to understand, considering that you've been running on empty. I'm going to give you an injection, and tomorrow everything will seem a hundred times clearer. I promise. I wish I could believe you. Give me your arm. There. I'll schedule you for a physical in a couple of days. Afterwards, you might want to stop by the Lynbrook building. I bet they've missed you. They should. I am Lady Lynbrook. Hold that thought, Rose. Never, ever forget who you are. Doctor? Yes? I meant to ask you about Burton. Your driver? Nobody's told me anything. But I, I know he has family. I want to continue his salary with full benefits. That would be very decent of you. His injuries must have been quite serious. I heard him, you know. When? On my way out of the hospital. He was in the last room at the end of the hall in severe pain. I told the nurse, but she acted as if she didn't know what I was talking about. You really should do something about your help. Why didn't you call me? That old doc came nosing around. I waited all day. Keep your voice down. Oh, oh Dr. Wrightson. Miss uh, Richards, isn't it? Nice to see you again. Uh, Miss Richards, uh, stop by to get some papers. Uh, she was just leaving, weren't you, Sally? Uh, Miss Richards. Yes. Y yes, I was. How's Rose? Much better. Is she? Don't bother with the pills tonight. I... I administered a sedative. With any luck, she'll sleep through till morning. Uh, bring her by in a day or two, and I'll give her the all clear. Isn't that rushing it a bit? Don't worry. She's a lot tougher than you think. I... I hope you're right. See you soon, then. Uh, 
if she's up to it. Something tells me she will be. Bye now. Bye. Bye. That's Sally. Why is she here? What, what are they saying? He's on to us. Relax. I can't take much more of this week. It won't be long. When? At the cabin in the mountains. Tonight. <gasps> Doctor, come back. I was right. I need you now. So this is how it ends. I seem to remember being carried from the house. It was still daylight, but the night was coming. I need you, Sally. Lift your feet. I'm trying to. Yeah, help me get her to the stairs. Well, what? She's coming too. No, she's not. I'll drive her. Meet me at the cabin in your car. No one will know you were there. It could have been a dream. For a time, I thought it was. I couldn't wake up. There was too much medication in my body from the injection. But it was all too real. The lake, the cabin, the one Jake built for me. Only this time I wasn't here with Jake. I heard Wayne in the room below the loft. I tried to sit up. Easy, Mrs. Lindbrook. Sally? Go back to sleep. Where am I? In bed. Where else? What? I said, go back to sleep. Now. I found some firewood. She keeps drifting in and out. Wayne? I want to go home. Sure, my love. As soon as you get your rest. It doesn't matter what we say. She can't hear. Can she? Not a word. Why are you doing this? I, I don't understand. No, 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 no. Don't worry, you will. How long is this going to take? I have to make it look right. She was feeling better. She, she wanted to go to the mountains. Why not? Then at some point, the excitement got to her, and she stopped breathing. How are you going to accomplish that? A simple... Pillow over the face. No marks. And the only drug in her system will be what the doctor gave her. Who knows? Maybe it was too much for someone her age. And we're so far out in the country. It'll take the ambulance forever to get here. What a shame. No. Isn't that so, darling? I don't want to see this. You won't. It'll happen in the middle of the night. By then, you'll be back at your apartment in the city. Why don't I just leave now? And miss the festivities? I brought champagne to toast your new job. I'm going to start a fire. It's freezing in here. Wayne! Shh, 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 shh. Now, Rosie, you need your strength if you want to make it through the night. Please. Save your breath. Save your breath. That's right. Close your mouth. Or I'll do it for you. Eventually, the medication started to wear off. I heard them downstairs by the fire. They thought I was still asleep. I could barely walk. My legs were too weak. Even if I could, there was no place to go. The lake on one side, the mountains on the other. I didn't need to turn on the hearing aid. I knew what they were doing. They were celebrating. When I was a little girl, I used to play hide-and-seek. We covered our eyes and put our fingers in our ears while one of us hid in a secret place. I was very, very good at that. 
No one ever found me. So tonight I would have to be it again. Except that this time there was no place to hide. Even climbing out of bed took all the strength I had. There was no way out, only the window, and it was too high for me to jump. But I knew the cabin well. I had designed it myself with Jake. A rustic dresser, a cedar chest, a small closet with a concealed wall safe. The only thing left was to listen, more closely than I'd ever listened in my life, so I'd know when he came for me. I turned up the hearing aid as high as it would go, and waited. I willed myself to stay awake, curled up in bed like a child, afraid of the boogeyman. But I was not a child anymore. You let me fall asleep. Where are you going? It's time. Now? Yes, now. Coming to get you, Rosie. Where are you? Gotcha. Stop right there. You're supposed to be asleep. I said, don't come any closer. I only came to kiss you goodnight. Not another step. <laughs> what have you got there? A 38 caliber Smith & Wesson. What does it look like? Careful now. You might hurt yourself. Stand back. Where did you get it? My first husband kept it in the safe. Ah, oh, you didn't know about that, did you? Rose, Rose. I remembered the combination. Put the gun down. One of the things he left me. Come on. The tools I needed to survive. Come on, give it to me. I'm warning you! <laughs> what did you do that for? Stay down! You don't get it. Don't make me shoot again. It was nothing personal. Just business. Business? You pathetic man. I am the business. My name is Rose Lindbrook. Anything else, Lieutenant? Uh, we'll need a copy of the autopsy. Of course. I'll send it over this afternoon. We have it listed as a... Uh, a gunshot wound in the chest. That's right. A single shot to the heart. Well, I guess that's enough for now. What about the assistant? The Richards girl? <laughs> Kidnapping, conspiracy to commit murder. She confessed everything. The deceased Wayne Benson says he was going to take over the business. He promised to make her the new Lady Lindbrook. Fools. There's only one of those. Here's my card. Call me when Mrs. L can make a full statement. It shouldn't be long. A day or two. She's a remarkable lady. Thanks, Doc. Not at all. Yes, nurse. Will you need me for anything else this morning? I guess not. I was just going over the test results from R&D. The hearing aid? What did they say? Looks like she was right. About what? It wasn't calibrated correctly. The gain was boosted way too high. So, I guess that explains it. I'm not sure I follow. She could have heard voices at a distance. From another room, say. If they didn't burst her eardrums first. No damage done, fortunately. The H-100 might actually have saved her life. Did she ever... Oh, it's, it's none of my business. Go ahead, Janet. Well, I was just wondering. Did she say anything to you? 
Didn't she suspect what her husband was up to? Yeah, patients say a lot of things to their doctors. Some real, some imaginary. The trick is to know the difference. This time, I should have listened more closely. She must have been terrified. She's lucky she didn't lose her mind. Want to hear something really peculiar? The frequency response. They used a new type of limiter circuit. Only it didn't work. So the high end was off the scale. So that's what she was complaining about. Not only the decibel level, but the extended upper frequencies. I don't see how anybody could bear it. Except for a dog. Above the normal range? Way above. Beyond any instrument we've got. If there are sound waves that high, no one's ever measured them. I'm surprised it didn't drive her insane. But sounds like that. Where would they come from? Don't ask me. Some other place. One we don't know anything about. Ah, I'm just spinning my wheels. It is strange, though. Yes, it is, because she swears she heard some very odd things. She believes she had a conversation with her husband, Wayne, for example, after she shot him. Of course, that's impossible. He died instantly, one shot straight through the heart. And after the bus accident. Hmm? Well, when I wheeled her out of the hospital, she said she heard patients at the end of the hall crying out in pain including her chauffeur. I know. But she couldn't have. The limo driver died in ICU while she was here. A and the room at the end of the hall? Well, you know what that is. Yes. The morgue. Hey there, Janet. Hi, Mimi. Going to lunch? I'll meet you in the cafeteria, right after I drop this off. Okay, great. Mrs. Lindbrook? Mrs. Lindbrook? Oh. Oh. Sorry. How are you feeling? What? I brought your hearing aid back, just as you asked. It should work perfectly now. They've recalibrated it. Here, let me fit it in your ear. I can do it myself. If you like. Ready for some lunch? Did you hear me? Uh, I said, are you ready for some lunch? Oh, stop fussing. I have what I need now. Well, if you need anything else, just, just buzz the nurse's station. Doctor will be by in a while. Till then, I'll leave you alone so you can rest. But I'm not alone now. They are with me, the voices of the dead. So many new ones coming and going in this place. I have to listen very, very closely. And one day, perhaps, just perhaps, I'll hear all of their secrets, all the things they have to share with me. Jake. Are you here? Speak to me, my love. If you're with me, speak now. I'll be able to hear. Where are you? Jake? Jake! Beauty is as beauty does, and love, like real beauty, never dies, here or in the twilight zone. Now 
Now You Hear It, Now You Don't. Starring Dee Wallace with Stacey Keach as your narrator was written for The Twilight Zone by Dennis Etchison from a story by Carl Amari. Heard in the cast were Norm Woodell, Rob Riley, Jim McCants, Jennifer Joy, Sia Moody, Mimi Ayers, Joby Cerny, and Alex Sopner. The producers of The Twilight Zone wish to thank CBS Enterprises and the Rod Serling Estate for making this series possible. This copyrighted radio series is produced by Carl Amari and directed by Joby Cerny for Falcon Picture Group. Sound design, custom Foley effects, recording, and editing are done in the Cerny American Sound to Picture Theater by sound designers Craig Lee, Bob Benson, Todd Beyer, and Tim Cerny. To learn more about the Twilight Zone radio dramas and to download episodes, including three free episodes on our homepage, visit our official website at twilightzoneradio.com. Doug James speaking. Ha <laughs> ha